Hello, welcome to our channel Skills and Consulting. I am Senior Trainer Triveni Suresh Babu. Today we are going to learn about Karnataka State Board's Class 6th Social Science History Lesson No. 8 Important Dynasties of North India Part 2 Kushanas. About 2000 years ago, Kushana dynasty ruled over Gandhara. Gandhara means present Afghanistan, which is our neighboring country. Gradually, many places in India came under the rule of Kushanas because they went on conquering the neighboring places. Kanishka is the most important or famous ruler among Kushanas. He waged battles for a long time and extended his empire. He spent most of his reign or rule in battles and extended his empire. His empire extended from Afghanistan to Bihar. So this is the picture of Kanishka. He was the follower of Buddhism and built many stupas like Ashoka. He followed the footsteps of Ashoka. He also embraced Buddhism or followed Buddhism and built many stupas. He sent Buddhist monks, monks means sannyasigalo, religious leaders, to many countries to spread Buddhism. He conducted the fourth international Buddhist conference. You just imagine during that period only, international religious conference was held. To mark the beginning of his administration or his rule, he started Shaka calendar, which is also called as Shalivahana Shaka. The name given to the calendar is Shalivahana Shaka. This calendar is also the official calendar of government of India. Even today, in Hindu Panchanga, we follow Shalivahana Shaka. See, this is the extension of or extent of Kanishka's empire. Some of the important places are marked here. That is Kapisha, Purushapura, Takshashila, Manikyal, Kashgar, Mathura, Kaushambi, Shravasti and Saranath. Now let us learn about the architecture and sculpture of Kushana's period. Kanishka built many stupas. The stupa in Purushapura, present Peshawar, had a 13 story tower. Just imagine there were 13 stories when he built the tower. And the tower was 400 feet high. Such an high. The tower was 100 feet high. It was building a wonder then because the, he made an attempt to build such a tall tower. He had also built a Kanishka Pura. See, this is Kanishka Stupa. So, it is beautifully engraved. Kanishka was a pattern of arts. Pattern, pattern means Ashraya Kurti. That was encouraged. Kanishka encouraged arts. He invited artists from different countries and as a result, new styles of art emerged out of these interactions called as Gandhara and Mathura. So, he invited artists from other countries also. Look at his encouragement towards the art. So, because of the interactions with the other people or other artists from other countries, two types of uh, uh, styles of architecture came into being or existence or it was developed Gandhara and Mathura. A stone statue of Kanishka has been found in Mathura. The head is missing in this stone statue. At the pedestal, Kanishka's name is H. Pedestal means supporting column at the bottom. Pita anta yena. On building, murti nena katpe kare. Kelgade support ke on pita katti wala. That is called as pedestal in English. So you can have a glance at the icon, image of Buddha in Gandhara style. Stone icon of Kanishka where the head is missing. Many coins belonging to Kushanas have been found. They were the first to mint gold coins in India. The gold coins represents the progress, economic prosperity. They were using gold coins means the country or his rule administration reached the height of progress during that period. Now let us learn about the literature. Kanishka had offered shelter to many good scholars and writers of his type, Panditru Atva writers and Tene So he gave patronage to many good scholars and writers. Ashwagosha is important among them. He has written Buddha Charita in Sanskrit. He, written, he wrote about Buddha, Buddha's story in Sanskrit language. This is Ashwagosha's picture. Nagarjuna was a great philosopher 
present in Kanishka's court. So here is the picture of Nagarjuna. He was a great philosopher. He was at the court of Kanishka. Vasumitra was a Buddhist scholar and he was the president of the fourth Buddhist conference held at Kashmir. See, during that period, an international Buddhist conference was held at Kashmir and he presided over the function. He was the important person who presided the function of the Buddhist conference. Charaka was said to be a contemporary doctor of Kanishka. That means contemporary means Samakalina. If two persons live during the same period, they are called as contemporaries. So Charaka was a famous doctor who ruled, who lived during the period of Kanishka. Now let us learn about new words, some of the new words. Inscriptions, writing carved, etched on stones. Etched means engraved. So you can see the inscriptions which are engraved on the stones. Stupa means a physical structure where the remaining of Buddha is placed in an urn. Urn means uh, the container to preserve the ash of the dead person. Telegade urn alavundu ash it pittu mele vandu doom na kattiyare. Once again I will repeat. A physical structure where the remaining of Buddha is placed in an urn and a doom is built around it. There are some informations in the textbook about Ashoka. Ashoka had sent his ambassadors not only to different states but also to different countries like Burma, that is Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Egypt, Western Asia and Eastern Europe. This shows his interest in spreading the Buddhism. His son Mahendra and his daughter Sangamitra were sent to Sri Lanka to spread Buddhism. Ashoka had a son by name Mahendra and a daughter by name Sangamitra. He sent both of them to Sri Lanka to spread the religion of Buddhism. A preacher named Mahadeva had been to the present Mysuru and another preacher named Rakshita had been to Banavasi. Mysuru are very familiar with the Mysuru. Banavasi is in North Karnataka, very near to Shirasi. It was the capital of Kadamba. So, a preacher, this shows that the rulers were so much interested in sending the preachers to the other parts of the country also. They had already come up to southern part of India. Architecture is an art of constructing buildings. Vastu Shilpa Antare, Shilpa Shastra Antare. So, it is an art of constructing building. Sculpture is an art of carving statues and other stone constructions. Shila Shastra Antare, Pratimigalana Madadu, Atva, stone constructions, so Stupagalan Madadu. Or pillars, all this comes under the sculpture. During the time of Ashoka, the use of stones started for architecture instead of wood and bricks. Previously, before Ashoka, the rulers were using wood and bricks. It will not last for long. If we carve anything on the stone or if we use stone for building, dooms, or stupas, or columns, it will last long. Therefore, the sculpture and architecture of Mauryas are long lasting. Even today, you can see them. That means uh, they used stones uh, for building. Thanks for watching our video. Hope you understood the lesson. Please watch, like and share our video. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Soon I will be back with the other lesson.